Welcome to a new Let's Play, everybody. Yes, I'm back. The Halloween stuff will come after this, by the way. Don't worry, I'm not quitting on that. But I am doing something for December, and that is this. It's based off the book, and it's also based off the movie, kind of, but it's kind of mixed in a way. It's weird. This is The Grinch on PS1. Um, I did this, like, a few years ago on stream for the uh, Friday Gamers event thing, but I thought, for this year... I'm gonna go ahead and go for the entire game 100%, and think I'm doing it this way because otherwise it would be hours of fucking stream bullshit and I'd just be angry and miserable and crap, because this game has some bullshit to it, let me tell you that. But first off, the cutscene. Oh, I got it! I have a great idea. This year, the Who's will pay. Here they are, my precious gadget blueprints. All my inventions, my contraptions, my Machiavellian machines. <laughs> that, in fact, is the misanthrope scheme. Build gadgets from blueprints. Halt the holiday theme. What gadget should I build first? The Grinch Copter? With this, I can fly over the despicable Who's. Maybe the octopus climbing device to scale the walls? No, no, no. The rocket spring to perform magnificent jumps. Or better yet, one of my most treasured weapons, the Rotten Egg Launcher to stink out my enemies, or the Slime Gun to just stick it to them. My Marine Mobile. No, no, no. I know. Yes, this! My plans! My precious plans! I'll never be able to build my gadgets! But will this debacle make the Grinch stop and quit? Of course not. He growls and pledges. I'll stick with it. You know what matters. Nothing's gonna stop us this year. I'll recover my plans piece by piece. And I swear to ruin the party for everyone! Even if I have to roam all over Hooland! So, let's begin with the worst part. Whoville! I have more than one crafty way to upset those irksome hooves. Okay, Max. We're ready. Let's creep down to Whoville. Let the mate begin! And as you can see, it begins where all the Grinch stories begin. The Grinch at his little hill area just being a miserable old fucking dickhead. Now, I could go forward, I can go backward to have this little thing where I can press some buttons to have him say some stuff. Like so. I hate Christmas! My heart is like a pea. I hate who's! And that's it. We can press triangle to leave, and then we can move on forward. So, yeah, there was just a little bonus thing there. Going forward. Darn! I forgot my keys. There should be a spare one in one of these boxes. The Grinch likes to break things with his robust behind. He'll flatten and smush to get out of a bind. This power is one that he completely controls. He'll pancake anything to attain all his goals. So yeah, we have the pancake move, which is a butt stomp move. We'll be using it to break a lot of shit and also take care of the main breakable, which is presents. We have to break a lot of presents to get 100% of the game. They don't really do much else except for 100% purposes and unlocking a few minigames, but yeah. The strength of the Grinch is a legend in Whoville. There's nothing he can't move with Grinch muscle and will. We can move shit around by going up to an object and holding the triangle button and just moving left to right, up or down. Depending on if the game allows you to. 
some movements, you know, some things can be moved, some things can't. Hey, Max! Listen to me, boy! There's another spare key in the next room. Go get it! Max the brown dog is the mean one's right-hand mate. He obeys grinchy orders, does not question his fate. This pup boldly ventures where the green one cannot. He approaches who strangers explores a small spot. Max is best boy and you can't tell me otherwise. Anyway, Max can go inside these small holes, which he'll be needing to do. He can grab items and also break uh, presents by running into them. Thanks, you bad boy. There you go. By the way, there are only certain presents you can break, not all of them. To access the next room, please identify yourself with the breath analyzer. An anti-who tool for which no blueprints exist is the smelly Grinch breath which cannot be missed. It appears in the shape of a rancid green cloud and can be used any time it's always allowed. This fog reveals things the naked eye can't see. Also, its rank odor weakens the enemy. Our main attack, it sucks. Oh my, <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> You're definitely the Grinch. <laughs> you can pass. There you go. But this is a main attack, the bad breath move. It doesn't always like to work. If you're moving around, it just doesn't work at all. And uh, yeah, its range just kind of sucks. Press the action button to cause Grinchy effects. This guarantees he will be a pain in who next. The other trouble button is a lot of things. Like for instance, the lever here. And now you know the main mechanics of the game. So it's time for this main thing. At the heart of the Heartless One's cave is his pride, a master computer with Grinchy smarts inside. After I collect the plans that have blown away, I'll feed them to my processor, and there they'll stay. It will build my gadgets with just a click of its gears. Amazing rhyming. Also, there are these things. The Grinch has invented a vast vacuum system. Through its miles of tubes, he can get to the Who's who he feels have so dissed him. As we begin, just the path to Whoville is clear. But as the scheme falls in place, more routes will appear. So yeah, we can only access Whoville, but uh, eventually we're going through more areas of the Who land. And also we can use this to see what kind of gadgets we have and... Uh, basically make the blueprints form because the blueprints are all in pieces unfortunately so we have to put them together which is going to be kind of an annoying puzzle the way this is designed i will not speed up the first blueprint i will speed up the rest though because they take a long time and they all suck to do also over here to open these super doors he must do something first break all kinds of presents make the packages burst once he's passed through this threshold, he'll be in a space filled with crazy games. It's a delirious place. So yeah, these are all of the unlockables that are required to destroy the presents. Uh, the highest amount is 2,500 presents, whereas everything else is like 750 and then like 1,500. So yeah, that's something we need to break to unlock all of those. Well, it's 100%. And here is Whoville. It's way down in Whoville that all Who folk reside. They're hugging and kissing the mean Grinch can't abide. Kind heartedness and joy fill their Hootopia. Honor and love fill the Who cornucopia. The Grinch must steer clear of their touch of affection. Avoiding all contact will be sheer perfection. But as he evades all their touching and feeling, the Grinch also plays pranks such as Christmas gift stealing. Okay, so our goals are shuffling the mail, smashing snowmen, painting the mayor's posters, launching eggs in the houses, modifying the mayor's statue, and advancing the countdown uh, to Xmas clock, as well as destroying all the presents, which we can't do until we get all the gadgets. Who grown-ups and children alike fear the Grinch, but they hope that through hugs he may change just an inch. 
The mean one must test different ways to evade all the who hugs and friendly advances they've made. Yeah, we're gonna have to avoid all the kids and such right now. The kids will grab onto us and we have to press left and right a whole bunch to get away from that shit. We can also get stuck in snow and also, um, a couple of the third thing that would get stuck. Ah, uh, the, the bees, I think. There are bees as well that will get us stuck. And also over here is the presents. The mission book outlines the Grinch's to-do list. Using this, the mean one knows there's nothing that he's missed. One important task is breaking holiday gifts. Just thinking of this deed, the Grinch spirit lifts. So that's our first collectible. Our second collectible is right in front of us over there. And uh, we won't be needing it right now, but we wanted to know this now. The Grinch just discovered a small rotten egg. Take it, all mean one, whether you steal or beg. This vile, fragile item's your most useful tool. You plop it in Grinch gadgets to give them more fuel. So yeah, these are the rotten eggs, which we can grab. Uh, you only get like one if they've already grown, but if you let them grow all the way through, you can get up to five. Your maximum of how many you can hold is 200, so keep that in mind. And, uh... You know, when we start off, the gadget use for that won't be too harsh, but later on, we're going to be needing to stock up a lot on the green bad eggs, so keep that in mind. Also, to my right is some more mechanic shit. Some scoundrels are awkward, clumsy, dumb, and so slow, but the Grinch is more sprightly than your average foe. He can hang on to ledges and swing round a pole, move right and move left to reach his roguish goal. So yeah, we can do some pole vaulting, which is spinning, we can turn around up the triangle button while spinning, and we can jump and release with the X button. Bit of an issue of that, however, uh, and that is the- oh, wait. Hey, who are you? Yeah, these kids will lock you on and not really let you get through. Also, this shit will hurt you, and as you can see again, this present is a pain in the ass. And it's not breaking from just jumping on it. There are four types of presents. Uh, there are the one present, which I believe are the red ones. There are the blue, the green presents, I think it is, that are free. There are purple presents. Well, I think these are the purple presents, the other one, whatever. Uh, but the, the other ones are like five, and the last ones, the red presents, are a tenner. Actually, the yellow press, I think they were. Yeah, yellow press are tenor. The ones and threes can be broken by just jumping on them, but for the fives and tens, you need to actually do a bunt stop on them, because otherwise they won't break at all. And as for these, there are two types of jumps with spinning. You can do a normal jump by just jumping forward, or you have to time yourself for a higher jump. It's really annoying and stupid. Also, knock this guy over to the other side like this, and you'll get this afterwards. Like so. To complete all his missions, the Grinch must collect numerous items, each with a special effect. His book contains a record of what he must find to use in the setting for which it was designed. Every level has its own items, and our first item is a paint bucket. We'll be needing this to take care of the goal of taking care of the posters. During my stream, I never actually knew how to get the posters for quite a while, uh, and it would say something about the mayor. Uh, but, because I got the paint bucket, it won't say anything about the mayor now. But don't worry, because now we can actually go ahead and interact with those, uh, posters and basically mess with them by just, uh, going up to them and pressing triangle. And that's gonna be the thing for a lot of this stuff. So, yeah. Go up to these posters, and yeah, paint it. Take this. There you go. And then that's the long cutscene. There'll be moments where I'm going to show, like, the full long cutscene without me, you know, talking much or, you know, putting the audio up more. Um, but after the first time, it goes for, like, a quicker cutscene. So, <laughs> see? That one was faster. And that's going to happen for the rest of these. So, the game won't make us, like, watch, you know, a 5 second cutscene or a 10 second cutscene every time we do this sort of thing. It will give us the shorter version after the first time. But, uh, yeah, ultimately this is basically the main thing. It won't do this longer cutscene first thing a lot. But, when it happens, you know, if it's necessary for me to show it, I'll be showing it. 
Also, as you can see, our breath attack does nothing to the fucking kids, and in fact, will do nothing to the cops. Uh, instead, it will only do something to the adult hooves because they will run away and drop presents. You need to get all the presents, so you have to breathe in every single adult who here to get their presents. Okay, it was purple. Good to know. So, purple is five, green is uh, three. Anyway, if we go to our right here, we get this. The tiptoeing Grinch is a master of stealth. If slyness were riches, he'd own a vast wealth. So yeah, we have stealth. By holding down the triangle button, we can sneak. It, uh, it kind of sucks, honestly. But yeah, this is the main thing. Also, there is like a phone booth here. And also, this fucking pole. This is one of the most annoying things about the pole vaulting. It's the very fact that you legitimately, legitimately have to not only time yourself, but also position yourself just right for some of these jumps. Because you might be able to think you can make it just anywhere, and then you kind of make it, and then it doesn't give you it. And by the way, the Grinch can grab onto ledges, but only when the game lets you grab onto ledges. There are points where that you will be grabbing a ledge, but it will never let you grab the ledge, because it chose not to. So yeah, you have to jump from there, and you have to time it just right for the high jump, or else you're not going to make that shit ever. That is the first of the annoying fucking pole vaulting puzzles. Just, it shouldn't be a puzzle really, but because of how obnoxious pole vaulting is in this game, it might as well be a fucking puzzle. Also over here is the city hall, which requires us to knock around that clock up there. We can't do that right now, but can't read the sign. I can't wait that long! I must find a way to change the time of that clock! And we will, just not right now. We need to find all these blueprints in order for us to, you know, make our gadgets. Uh, there are the binoculars right now, and also our first main gadget, which is like a rotten launcher, rotten egg launcher. Which will be needed in order to take care of a good amount of things in the game. It'll be our longest attack, which doesn't do much at all. The breath actually takes them out fairly well when needed. Uh, but it will be necessary for a lot of puzzles and for breaking a lot of shit. At least, breaking certain things that can't be breakable with the egg launcher. Again, the way this game has everything work, it never explains it, and it ultimately makes it a problem. Also, we got all 10 of the snowmen done. Yeah, Grinch! And get ready to see him say that every fucking time you complete an objective. He's gonna say, yeah, Grinch! Every damn time. So yeah, this is the main game. Um... Again, if you've seen my stream of this, you already know this game isn't very good. But, uh, I'm gonna do my best to at least make this entire Let's Play, I don't know, watchable, I guess. I'm gonna do my best to not waste time for you and also to give you a coherent way of knowing where everything is. Because, let me tell you this right now, the presents are your best. Biggest nightmare if you're going for 100%. You might think that it's going to be all of these goals and getting the blueprints and such, but yeah, the blueprints do suck to give. You don't know where the fuck to go and get them. But they're all in, like, kind of obvious paths and such. Not a huge issue except for one gadget. Uh, but... Oh, man, the presents. Like, the game... The game never actually explains how to get every present. And... It kind of needed to because there are some ways of getting presents that you're never going to figure out yourself. Also, that's all the post is done. Yeah, great! And there you go. We took care of all the posters and uh, that that's it. We, we got two of the goals done. Uh, in order for us to move on right now, we need to take care of, like, I believe, three of the goals. You have to take care of all the goals, especially since you really can't take care of all the goals right now. Also, as you can see, this, uh, this music box thing, as well as the kid, is a very annoying combo. 
But yeah, we have to go around, find all of these, and we have to grab all of the binocular and the Ron Egg Launcher blueprints. In case you're wondering, the binoculars is going to be on by complete default. It is not a gadget that we can equip. It is instead a thing that lets us zoom in with any gadget at all from the first person view. So it's a default thing that will be of help. Especially for aiming, because aiming in this fucking game is god awful. But, um, yeah, like, the, the Ron Nate. The Rotten Egg Launcher is going to be just fine. Also, we do need to sneak right now. In case you're wondering, that door there, we are going to need to get inside that building because our disguise is inside of there and we need the disguise because these phone booths are actually disguise booths. It'll allow us to change into a disguise and we only have to do disguise shit for like two levels. So... And by the way, there are only four levels in the game. So that's like half of the fucking levels where we only have to do costume shit. And hey, here it is. The Who Cloak. Which is, quite honestly, the creepiest fucking cloak out of the entire game. It is legitimately the creepiest disguise. Also, we go up right now. We get hurt. Because there is a thing blocking the way, and we can't get rid of that thing until we get a gadget to get up there. So, yeah. But yeah, this fucking Who Cloak, it is the creepiest fucking thing that the Grinch has. Like, like, you think he's creepy right now, and then he wears this fucking thing and you just see him. Yeah, that is, um... That, that's a bit off-putting to see, especially that fucking mask of his. It looks like a fucking hockey mask. He's gonna goddamn hawk, like, kill some grifter or some shit. I swear to god. Anyway, now we have the disguise, we can now move on forward, and uh, also we can't attack, in case you're wondering. All of our gadgets and our attack moves and such are disabled when we're in disguise. So, uh, yeah. We can't do our breath. Nor can we do much else. The enemies, for the most part, won't bother us. Uh, but, yeah, we can't attack them at all. Also, here is this little girl. Who you might kind of recognize a, a little bit. Like, there is like a little girl who kind of plays a bit part with the Grinch story. And I think that might be her. I don't remember exactly. It's been years since I've seen the Grinch. Um, but as you can see, she is currently working on the mail stuff, which we have to fuck with. And how do we fuck with it? Well, first of all, there are security cameras. If we get caught by one of them, I believe we get kicked out of the building entirely because we're caught. So that'd be like an instant game over thing. But hey, this door is off from the inside. How do we get in? Well, there are these broken vents here that are also color-coded. I don't know why they're color-coded, but it really helps us to fuck out. The problem is that we have to find the color-coded areas, which is, uh, awkward. And this is a pretty big, kind of mazy area, too. It's not exactly fun to navigate here. But yeah, you'll know exactly, like, what kind of door to go to and everything like that based on the color coding. So, as you can see, I'm in the purple door area. And hey, we unlocked the door by pressing that red button there. However, we only now have about 10 seconds for uh, the Grinch to get over there. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the Grinch can't just, you know, press on to max again and then he's still there on the button. Uh, because every time that button gets pressed, he just goes in the middle. And if you press select button to be Max again, Max just teleports right to your fucking feet. So, we gotta get him back in there. So yeah, that's kind of annoying, but what can you do? Oh, by the way, you might have noticed that I got a Heart of Stone. That is our health upgrade. Every level has one, and uh, in case you're wondering about the how the health works, our health is already at empty, and we wanted to keep it empty. If it gets filled up from being attacked or being cuddled or what have you, uh, it will basically lead us to a game over if it gets to full. So, yeah. It doesn't make the Grinch suddenly nice. It just 
piss them off, and then we have to be teleported back to like the starting area of an area. And I do mean of an area. Let's take you back to the very beginning of the level, or back to the uh, the main hub area. It just puts us back to a checkpoint area, essentially. So yeah. And now we can go inside, and we can now just destroy these presents, and also fuck with the mail by pressing the struggle button right next to it. Boy, I'm beautiful. Hey! Pretty basic, huh? We have to take care of all five mail areas. There are only four colored doors, however. The last door, the gray door, is locked to take care of the first four mail because of a cutscene. Also, as you can see, not a big area. We went around the circle already, so... Now I gotta get my way all the way back and take care of the other colors. So that was the purple door. Over here is the orange door. Basically, I keep note of what door you have to go for of its color and then go find the colored area of the vent area. And there you go. That orange one's a little bit deceiving because you see that orange hallway, but the orange is actually in a bit of a gray area, really. But yeah, there you go. And yeah, you can see this is the faster version. Not much else to it. So yeah, uh, that is essentially with this main mission here. And you're gonna feel a lot of repetition throughout all of this, uh, because a lot of these goals are gonna feel kinda samey, and so is breaking all the presents, and so is essentially the majority of the fucking game. It's not a fun game, I will say that much. Nor will I say it's super easy like some people say it is, because... There are some things when it comes to, at the very least, completing it 100%, that is just fucking bullshit. Like the game wants to do things that it never hints you on, and unless you go out by just fucking around, really, you're never gonna know, and you're gonna end up missing a lot of stuff. And the thing is, I do end up missing on a few things uh, throughout these recordings. So keep in mind that I will come back and take care of everything. Just also keep in mind that if you notice me, like, you know, not doing something when I should have done that, uh, just remember that, you know, I don't know every fucking thing to do right off the bat, so, uh, there's gonna be mistakes. I'm going to fuck up a few times, and that's going to be a guaranteed problem, because this game... It kind of likes to be mazy, just a bit, and it, it sucks when it does it. Anyway, all the doors are unlocked now, we can do all the mail, like so. But, but what is happening? Dad? Dad? Daddy who? Could you come here, please? Just a minute, dear. I've got to finish this, and I'll be right with you. You can kind of see where the live-action movie and this, the original story, you know, the original animated uh, movie, uh, you know, kind of went. Like, seriously, the, the live-action movie, I, I don't mind it. It's not great, but I do think it's okay. Um... But yeah, there are definitely some things of the live action and the animated slash original story just kind of meshing with this game, and it's really weird. Also, take care of all the presents, get the rod link launcher, take care of that last mail after it's all cleared out, and you'll complete the objective with this cutscene right over here.
and the Grinch got to thinking how nice it would be to get some fresh air, watch the Who's try and ski. And now we have the Who Forest. And yeah, as you just saw there, that very much was what the Grinch said to that uh, little blonde girl in the original. You know, <laughs> gets caught and then kind of does the whole spook thing as the Grinch. But yeah, that is um, basically, we should be done here, honestly, and then we can move on to the forest. But one, we don't have the launcher, as you can see, she's gone and everything, and also the cameras are off now, so that's good. But yeah, one, we don't have the launcher yet, we have to make that, and uh, there we go, now the launcher uh, blueprint is here, because we completed this objective, so now we can finally make the damn thing. And how do you make it? By going back to the main hub, and using that computer to do the whole fucking, it's not a slime puzzle, but it is a shitty puzzle. Also, Jesus Christ, that face. But yeah, we have what we need, so we now move on forward and uh, utilize our launcher to basically fuck up the clock, which you want to do right now. But before we can do that, we do have to actually assemble it. And like I said before, I'm not going to speed this up. I'm going to show you in real time how long this one took me. Now, the first thing you should note is that the bottom right corner will always have this uh, rectangle box with a G on there or whatever. So, keep that in mind. I'm now placing this upside fucking down for some fucking reason. Uh, but yeah. As you can see, this puzzle is pretty easy because it's only like four pieces. Eventually, it will be 16 pieces. So, yeah. The way you do it is you pick a piece and you move it around and rotate it and such, and you have to place them all into the correct spots, rotate it correctly and everything. And to start things off, it's not that hard, but later on it's going to be obnoxious because these just these textures are not very good, and uh, it's very easy for textures to just kind of mesh together and look like they're in the right place when they're not. And you get confused, and it upsets you, and you take forever to deal with it, so, uh, get used to that. The Rotten Egg Launcher's a brilliant invention, as the smell that it brings causes more than just tension. Once an eggshell breaks open and vile fumes escape, who eyes glaze over and who mouths can only gape? When the Grinch needs to hassle the Who's from afar, he turns to his launcher with a hearty har-har. Few things irk him more than Who's equipped to resist the days and confusion brought on by rotten mist. And now we have our first gadget, the Von Egg Launcher. This is our, you know, our distance attack in a way. Jump cuts me going to the clock, I'm gonna use it to just shoot at the clock, and uh, yeah, that will complete a task kind of to let us inside the city hall. I know the voice acting is 10 out of 10, huh? I mean, the narrator is fucking fantastic. You can't get wrong with the narrator, because he's a, he's a great fucking narrator. And the Grinch has moments. Um, he's not the best Grinch, though. But, yeah, like, everyone else. Hmm. I mean, I guess the, the blonde girl was fine. But, yeah, like, everybody else just kind of sucks. And the voice acting is going to get worse and worse as time goes on. Also, by the way, uh, there is this room here. If you, I believe, get caught, you get sent back before all of this. So, yeah, this room here, there are some things on the wall and such. And you don't immediately realize that you can interact with anything there. It's like it's a completely empty room that you might be put into if you get caught here. Because you gotta be stealthy and be quiet and use the shadows. So yeah, uh, we can't attack these guys. Even though we have the egg launcher, our egg launcher does fucking nothing to these pricks. 
And as you saw there, oh no, I got caught, and this fucker is faster than me. Luckily, I was able to run back, but yeah. You notice that this guy is faster than you, and he will immediately notice you if you're not continuously holding the triangle button the entire time while moving. And, uh, yeah, use the shadows. Anyway, at the very least, I can now get over here, no problem, and move past. And once we're in the shadows, we should be kind of in the clear. Just, you know, keep sneaking. Don't just run, because they're still around. Inside of here, there are a few presents, as well as a statue, which is a statue for the task. But it is surrounded by fucking invisible lasers, which you can't see. So that sucks. Don't worry, it's not that hard for me to figure out how to do this. You know, you're thinking, use the launcher to press that button, even though aim kind of sucks. Even if I use the analog stick, it is incredibly awkward and very, very sensitive in a bad way, where going half movement is like full movement this fucking game. So, yeah. But as you can see, shooting the button doesn't do shit. Don't worry, we'll be coming back in a deal of it, but uh, right now there was the other door. If we go up to this other door, and not that one, there is something we'll need to do the statue task. As you can see, inside of here there are some more presents, which I'm doing butt stomps on when I really shouldn't be. There you go. These ones I should be. Yeah, because the fives and tens need the butt stomp. But as you can see, uh, there is like a shelf over there that is, you know, a darker brown than the rest of the stuff here. As well as a blueprint for the Grinch Copter, which is our final gadget, by the way. The Grinch Copter blueprints are everywhere. And it's also a very necessary gadget for movement and such. Inside of here is a safe. Now, how do we open the safe? Do we interact with it? Do we, you know, figure out a puzzle with it? No. You just get on top of it and then you butt stomp it. It's not obvious you have to do that. You would think you just have to interact with it and it opens up or whatever, but no. You do that and that's it. We got the sculpting tools now. Again, this game expects you to just figure out a lot of shit that, uh, sometimes doesn't make sense. And later on, when we do the present shit, oh boy, is it gonna be kind of fucking bad? that we have to figure out this kind of shit on our own, without even a slight hint that we have to do that shit. Anyway, I jump over to all the lasers, and hey, the button. That was too Security is off, we can get the Grinch Carter blueprint, we now fuck up the statue, like so. Time for a facelift, Mr. Mayor. Believe some more, I say you're grinched. <laughs> nice, nice statue work. I have no idea how you were able to get more stone onto the thing, Grinch, but good job, man. You were somehow able to like form more clay onto that fucking thing with just a chisel and a hammer. Anyway, there are two ways for me to get back now. I could sneak back, or I can get caught, and it will just teleport me right back. I wanted to sneak back though, because I wanted to showcase, uh, you know, the stealth. Yeah, the stealth is fun, huh? My old strategist was developed by the same people who made the Bugs Bunny PS1 games, which are much better than this fucking game. Like, in many ways. Hey! Oh shit. Outta here! Outta here! And there you go. We teleport right back here and we get caught. So yeah, we can now leave. Now, there is a, you know, a little bit of a cutscene thing I want to show you, because one more test we can do right now, and it does involve the egg launcher. So, I'm a jump cut to me taking care of this thing. See this window here? When I open, shoot it, and uh, this will happen. It's gonna smell like Santa's ew socks. Well, so yeah, this is our next test, which is, you know, shooting all of these windows, which there are ten of. 
uh, and making them stink the place with the egg launcher. Problem, this game and its depth perception sucks, and so is the aim, but that's beside the point. But you can see that as we go from a distance, everything really deloads, like, all the textures go away. Which makes trying to find shit an absolute pain in the ass, especially with fucking goals like this, which require you to look everywhere, at every building, at every wall, in every fucking concealable angle, in order to find shit. And these are small windows too, these are not like big, obvious windows, these are small windows that open and close every now and then, you know, they have a set animation thing going on, a set time. But yeah, they're not obvious on where they all are. And they kind of mesh with all the other windows and doors around here. So it's really easy to just miss a lot of these because you can't fucking find them with the damn shitty distancing and the fact they blend into everything else around the area. And because the developers put the windows in some honestly rather shitty areas which make them very easy to miss sometimes. Like this one, I wouldn't think there's a window right there, but there is, and you also wouldn't think there's a window over on this corner over fucking here, but there is, and once you got them all, you got them all and you get this. Yeah, I grinched. There you go. You don't get that door, by the way, that door will go closed again, it's just a cutscene thing, but there you go. All I have left is advancing the counter and the Xmas clock, which we can't do until we take care of that, uh, that latch that is unfortunately in the way. It's back we have to sneak past that guard. So yeah, we can't do that one until we get a certain gadget for that, which means some backtracking. Get ready for a lot of fucking backtracking in this game, because half the damn game is kind of just backtracking. Anyway, that's gonna do it for now. That was Whoville. And, uh, as you can see, that is sort of the gist of how this game's gonna work out. Not much else to say about it. I did miss the binocular, uh, blueprints, by the way, but don't worry. I'll get them later on. I, I will make sure to get them in the next part, in fact. But yeah, as you can see, there are a lot of gadgets, and as you can also see, the sizes do get quite small, because they go from, like, 4 to 16. So... Yeah, it's gonna suck. But that's gonna do it for this part. Next time, we are going to the Who Forest, which is, in my opinion, the absolute worst level in the fucking game. <laughs> You'll see why later on. But thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time.